In this lecture, I'd like to examine a few important reactive intermediates that can be produced from a methane molecule. Now, reactive intermediates are simply molecules or compounds that are too unstable and reactive to exist for a very long time. So they exist for a very short time and they react with other compounds and molecules to produce new compounds. So let's look at the following uh, methane molecule. So in this reaction we have the following CH bond that dissociates. So this bond breaks in such a way that the two electrons go directly onto our H atom. So we get the following two reactive intermediates. We get the methyl cation and we get this hydride ion. So this hydride molecule has two electrons in the 1s state, in the 1s orbital. So it has a negative charge. This methyl cation has a positive charge on the carbon. That means it has one less electron than it should in its neutral state. Now this guy will be very active because it will tend to act as a Lewis base donating that pair of electrons. Likewise, this guy will also be very active. It will tend to accept a pair of electrons uh, into its empty orbital, which we'll see in just a second. So let's look at the second type of reaction. Now this methane molecule, the CH bond also dissociates, but now it dissociates in a way such that the pair of electrons go onto the carbon atom. So now we get a methyl anion and this positively charged H atom. So this guy has no electrons in the 1s orbital. So that means it, it will be very active and will tend to act as a Lewis acid. Now this methyl anion, since now it has a pair of electrons inside its orbital, it will tend to act as a Lewis base donating those electrons. And because it has one more electron than it should in its neutral state, it has a negative one charge. So let's look at the third type of reaction with the methane molecule. In this reaction, the following CH bond associates, but it associates in a way such that one electron goes onto the carbon and one electron goes onto the H atom. So we get the following two radicals. We get the methyl radical and the H radical. So each molecule has one electron in its orbital. So now let's examine the three-dimensional shapes of these reactive intermediates and let's compare and contrast them. So let's go back to the methyl cation. So I said earlier that this carbon will have an extra or an empty 2p orbital and because it has an empty 2p orbital it will act as a Lewis acid. So let's see what that means. Notice also that it has three identical CH bonds and that means this carbon will be sp2 hybridized. So all these bonds will be sp2 hybridized. And that means that all these bonds will lie on the same plane, let's say the xy plane. And the angle, since we have three angles here, the angle between each adjacent CH bond will be 120 degrees. So this guy is 120, this angle is 120, and the angle in the back is also 120. Now this line, the solid line, simply means the H is coming out of the board. The dashed line simply means the H is going into the board. Notice this pure 2p orbital. This orbital is not sp2 hybridized. This is a pure 2p orbital, and that's exactly why this guy will act as a Lewis acid. So if you take this molecule or atom and combine it with this uh, molecule, this Lewis base will tend to donate this pair of electrons to this orbital, forming back our methane molecule. So now let's look at the methyl anion. Now we have a similar picture, but we have a pair of electrons within this 2p orbital. And that means the pair of electrons will be found in, within this green positive region. And now we're no longer going to have sp2 hybridized orbitals. In fact, this pair of electrons will act as if it was a bond. 
because this pair of electrons will increase the negative charge, thereby increasing the electron density. And this will make the CH bonds move downward in an umbrella-like fashion. So now our bonds are going to be very close to sp3 hybridized. So we're no longer at sp2, we're sp3 in this methyl anion molecule. And now this pair of electron will tend to act as a Lewis base, donating these two electrons to some other atom. Now let's look at the final methyl radical. Now the methyl radical is a combination of the following two drawings. Now at one given point it's in this state and another given point it's in this state. So it inverts from this form to this form. So it exists somewhere in between and in fact we can approximate that the three-dimensional picture of our methyl radical looks something like this. So it's very similar to this methyl cation. And for most purposes, we can approximate that this has the same exact three-dimensional drawing as this methyl cation. So we assume for the most part that all these bonds are sp2 hybridized. In other words, because we only have one electron and not two, that one electron does not have enough power to bend this shape as much as these two electrons bend the shape here. So they will exist between this and this guy, and an approximation somewhere in between is this drawing here. So once again, all these three molecules are very reactive. They're called reactive intermediates, and they won't persist in a stable state for a very long time. They will exist for a very short time. They will either react with these molecules to produce back our product, our reactants, or they will react with other molecules to produce other compounds.